Hey guys, welcome to the first of the uh, Game Hall videos for 2020. Am I in focus? I hope I am, because we're going to start straight away. Last uh, last episode for the game pickups, anyway, I said I'd picked up a few of those uh, PS3 games and traded a load in. Well, they wouldn't take one of them, so I still got Sonic the Hedgehog. And the reason for it is apparently there's a scratch on it. I couldn't see it when I was checking, but it's always worth to uh, have a proper thorough look because I can actually see it now that uh, CEX pointed it out. I don't know whether it means that it won't load or not. I just really don't know. But uh, if I get a PS3, at least I've got one game I can try on it. I haven't picked a PS3 up yet. Uh, it's one of those things that might be on my radar for this year. Probably uh, late on, let's put it that way. But I did uh, go into CEX and trade a few things in. So I got something rather nice from it. And that is Siberia. This is what I got for those uh, games that I basically I paid a pound for for the set of them. Siberia. It's a six quid uh, game on CEX, which is not bad at all. And everything's here. And what actually happened is I put it into the PlayStation 2 and started playing and didn't want to stop. It's my kind of game. It's a point-and-click adventure game. It's really, really good fun, guys. If you have a PS2 or a PS3 and uh, you want to try a PS2 game, get that one. It's pretty good. But that's not all that I've picked up because it has been one of those times when everyone starts clearing things out, make some space for Christmas. So I also managed to pick up a Game Gear game. First one for a while. I am still collecting them. Just uh, whenever I see a one that I don't have. It's Fantasy Zone. And it's great. I love uh, Fantasy Zone. It's a weird game, but I love it. But uh, at the same time that uh, picking up Fantasy Zone, I also found, finally, a copy of Resident Evil 2. I have a copy on PC. It's around here somewhere. Is that it there? Probably can't put my hands straight on it. But I do have a pile of... Uh, yeah, I can. A <laughs> PC version... Really good. I adored the PC version. I bought that back when it was uh, still the latest Resident Evil. And, oh my goodness, I had so much fun with it. But it's uh, been a bit of a problem finding it on PS2. Uh, not PS2, PS1, because that's the version I wanted to have. I've got the GameCube ones, the remakes of uh, Zero and um, Resident Evil 1. I've got 3, 4, 5 and 6... But I never had two on a console, and I wanted the PlayStation version because I've got the uh, three on the PlayStation. It's a lot of fun. So finally, finally tracked down a copy that wasn't too expensive and picked it up. Speaking of things that weren't too expensive, True Blood 1 and 2. It's a complete series of 1 and 2. It got weird later on, True Blood, but the first couple of series are a lot of fun. So I'm going to enjoy watching them. Pound each. I'm not going to say no to that. But that's not even it. That's not the last of it, because we've got a fair amount of stuff still to get through. So, another code R on the Wii. I picked this up on a whim, because it looked like uh, one of those hidden gem style games. It's actually pretty good. It's a point-and-click adventure game, sort of. And uh, there's a lot of depth to it. I love the style of the art style it's going for. It's great. They're walking around left and right in a kind of 2D but 3D sort of way. Reminds me of an awful lot of uh, old 8-bit games, especially stuff like Turn and Og. If you remember that on the Amstrad and Spectrum, oof, so good. So I think I'm going to enjoy that, so I'm glad I picked it up. But that's not the only thing. I finally found a copy of Altered Beast. Now, this isn't exactly the best PlayStation 2 game ever made. I took it out of its protective package because it was a fair amount of money. And uh, I don't have the manual, but I do have a Sega catalog. So... We've got that at least. It's it's all right. It feels an awful lot like a, an underwhelming brawler, but I haven't gone too far into it because it didn't grab me. So maybe I'm wrong. But uh, what I wasn't wrong about was without warning. This is a lot of fun. I don't like the controls. The, I think the controls could have been refined an awful lot more. But it's a fun game. It's a fun uh, first-person shooter. A bit of tactics to it as well, and a lot of cover-based combat. But I think it's going to be good to play. What is also good to play is Way of the Samurai 2, which is a very interesting one. And uh, no manual for this, so hopefully it won't get too complex. Uh, did I tell you? Oh, yeah. Without warning, also had uh, 
manual and everything's there in good condition. This doesn't have manual, but it's a decent enough game, and hopefully it won't get too complicated where you need to know a lot of controls, because I don't have them. Speaking of games where you don't need a lot of controls, Gunfighter 2, finally track this down. This is an interesting... Uh, a, 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 it's a light gun game. You can play it on your standard joystick, uh, joypad, but it's a light gun game with the same sort of mechanics as uh, Time Crisis. So it's got to pull back for cover and reload, then go in for shooting. It's good fun. Everything's here in great condition. Really, really happy with that. But here's a weird one that I found in the same shop as that. Seven Samurai 20XX. Apparently based on the Akira Kurosawa film. I don't see a similarity when I play this. This is a weird brawler, a bit like Devil May Cry. Everything's here in great condition. It's just weird. It's an oddball. But I think I'll, once I get into it, I'll probably be alright with it. But here's the main thing. This was a Christmas present from Jen. Thank you so much, Jen. Gradius 3 and 4. So good. This is amazing. I've seen it around in shops a few times, but never had a chance to pick it up because it was always... like If I was getting a bundle of games, I wasn't going to pay the... A uh, high price for it. So she picked it up for me. It's in great condition. It, it's such a good game. A couple of games actually. Everything's here in great condition and my goodness I have had so much fun playing this. It's my kind of game. It's a side-scrolling shoot 'em up It's got a lot of tactics to it. You get to pick up power-ups and decide on which power-ups you want. It is so much fun. Guys, if you get a chance to play Gradius 3 or Gradius 4, take that chance because this is definitely worth it. But that's all I've got for you for the moment. It's great to actually have been able to add a fair few more titles to the PlayStation 2 collection because it feels like I've been struggling for quite a while, but now I've got a load of titles, so we are still getting there. Progress is still being made on the collection. So, okay guys, a bit of an update to the last video. It's uh, been one of those situations, but, uh, you know, things turn up. There was a bit of uh, an interesting thing I found on Amazon where someone was selling off uh, sealed new copies of uh, the Elder Scrolls Online expansion for Somerset at 10 quid. I mean, these are normally like 18, so I thought, I'll have that. And, uh, you know, now that means I've got all of the uh, Elder Scrolls expansion sets, uh, Morrowind, Somerset, and uh, elsewhere. Don't have the disc for elsewhere. It's one of those things. These, uh, you can get them as uh, DLC, but the thing about getting it as DLC is uh, you don't get the disc, <laughs> of course. But if you've ever seen one of these things, the disc that comes with it is just the Elder Scrolls Online. This is uh, Tamriel Unlimited. If you put it in, it'll say it's Tamriel Unlimited, which is the, the, uh, the current version of uh, Elder Scrolls base game. Great game, by the way. I absolutely adore Elder Scrolls. I, I wouldn't be buying expansions if I didn't. But uh, you download, you use a you know, download code to access the, the extra areas. So all of the discs are just Elder Scrolls Online. I mean, if I ever see it for cheap, I'll pick up the Elsewhere one, but... Uh, I don't really need it, but since that was cheaper than getting the DLC, I picked it up, because of course I did. Did the same with Morrowind last year. Uh, was it last Yeah, it was last year now, technically. Yeah, about May. And uh, that was six quid, whereas normally it was like 10 or 12 if you were using the DLC. So I'm very happy to add that. And my goodness, I've been playing it so much. Jen can attest to how much I've been playing it. While I've been laid up over uh, the Christmas period, <laughs> I've been playing Elder Scrolls almost non-stop. It's great. I love, uh, it's it's pretty much become my MMO of choice. Every uh, person who plays an MMO RPG has the MMO of choice, and that was mine. So, uh, used to be Star Trek Online, now it's Elder Scrolls. But it's not the only thing I picked up, because here's a weird thing that I found for 30 pence. My Day with Spider-Man. This is a Marvel for Kids thing. Uh, it appears to be be um, fully narrated, personalised, interactive animation, ages two and up, and educational. It's some sort of uh, 2D activities thing. I don't know what it was, would be, but it's uh, Windows 98 compatible, so I can probably get it to run on Wine on the Mac, which is great news. And uh, it's personalised to, uh, yeah, to Luke from Spider-Man. So Luke, if you wonder where your parents uh, put your uh, Spider-Man disc, uh, they put it in a charity shop and I bought it. I'll give it a try and see where it is. I don't know. It could be something, could be nothing. It'll make an interesting, like, uh, short Game Hammer video anyway, won't it? 
something a bit of a curiosity. But anyway, hello guys, back again. I didn't expect to add anything to this, but Jen and I have been around the charity shops of the last couple of days and we may have found some stuff. So, first of all, another lightsaber. I'm a sucker for lightsabers. I, I didn't expect to collect the entire set, but it feels like at this point I might as well because if I find different ones in the charity shops for 50 pence, which is what this was, then sure. So this time, see if I can... Yep. Yeah. Blue. So I've now got uh, the double-bladed red, uh, Darth Vader's uh, red, and uh, I believe this is uh, Obi-Wan's. I'm not entirely sure. Did Obi-Wan have a green one or a blue? Sure he had a blue, yeah. I think this is Obi-Wan's, but I'm not entirely entirely sure you know it's one of those things i'm not up on the uh, identifying them by sight but it's, an, it's a nice looking one it might even be luke's no it can't be luke's it can't hang on hang on the similarities in design because darth vader didn't change his slides ever too much uh from anakin's did he oh <laughs> so uh it, that might be anakin's uh, it might be it might be Obi-Wan's. So anyway, 50 pence. I'm not going to say no to a lightsaber for 50 pence. Add to a collection. And then uh, Jen found this. Uh, Simpsons Hit and Run. Platinum version. Really nice condition case. Really nice condition manual. And I think the game is in decent enough condition. Yeah, it definitely is. Decent condition. So we'll be trading that into CEX because it's like three quid. But the... Funnily enough, the manual may have disappeared because CEX, you don't uh, you don't give extra credit for the manuals, so you don't get the manuals when I trade them in. It's just how it is. I'll put these aside because I can trade a few manuals for some uh, ones that I don't have later on, which is how I plan to get the uh, the manuals later. But Jen was uh, she did really well. I wasn't expecting to see any more games this month because. Uh, it's one of those things. People have a clear out for Christmas and then they kind of sit on stuff. But she found one, two, three, four, five. Five PS1 games. So let's have a look at what she's found. Well, first of all, Worms Armageddon. I actually quite like Worms Armageddon. I don't think I've already got it. I did have a Worms game off that. I knew. I was looking around because I knew I had one. Worms World Party is up on uh, my set of PS1 games. But this, eh, when it focuses back in, Worms Armageddon. Now, do I have that on... Nope, don't even have that on PS2, so that's an interesting one. Which one have I got on Mega Drive? Just Worms, straight up Worms. So, um, um... I'm sure I've got it on PC then. I've got this game somewhere. I'm looking at all of my uh, sets of games. I'm surrounded by this stuff at this point. I know I've got this game on something else, but not on PlayStation 1, so I'm very happy to have that. So, the case has a crack in it, so as you can see, it's got a crack there. But the manual cover, the, sorry, the, the inlay is uh, in good condition, and the manual is a little bit uh, dog-eared, and uh, yeah, clearly shows signs of someone's put cork on it at some point, but it's here, and that's pretty good. And the game itself, a fair few scratches, but that should still play, which is what I like in my games. Uh, being able to play them is an important part of my gaming, so I'm very happy to add that to the set. What else have we got next up? Well, we have Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Now, you can see from here that the manual, that the, not manual, the uh, inlay is not in the best condition ever, but the case is pretty good. The manual is in pretty good condition, however, so that's pretty good. I don't have this Harry Potter in this condition up uh, anywhere, do I? I do have some Harry Potters, because a couple of years ago, when I got the PlayStation 2 one, we ended up with uh, an interesting situation where I had the PlayStation 1 version. I think it was... Uh, I don't think it was Philosopher's Stone. I think it was Chamber of Secrets, because it took me ages to get the Philosopher's Stone on PS2, because it's quite hard to get. It's one of those early PS2 games where the people that were that it was aimed at, children, young children were still on the PS1. They, they got the hand-me-down console, so this version sold more than the PS2 version. So it must have been Chamber of Secrets that I got the PlayStation 1 version stuck in with it. It, had, it had just did a carpet sale. But yeah, 
really good condition disc so I'm very very happy to add this to the set so let's slide that back in there and I'll sort out the inlay later that's not the only highly product because talking about Chamber of Secrets here it is so someone's uh, had a nice set and uh, again the the cover has this uh, weird sheen to it it's it's a bit dusty it's been around somewhere for a while but uh, I'm very happy to add it to the set and give it a good home the manual is in great condition and let's have a look at the disc itself. Not a scratch on it. Really good condition. So I'm very, very happy to have two copies of uh, Harry Potter in different games in really good condition on PS1. We'll do a you know, comparison of Game Hammer. There's not a huge amount of difference, if I remember correctly. But we'll have a look. Then up, uh, the next one we have is a very interesting one that I'm very eager to give a try. And it's Eminem Shell Shocked. Now, I've only seen this around once. And that was on a photo of someone else's charity shop hall on one of the various Facebook groups. And it's quite interesting how under underproduced this seems to have been and uh, therefore consequently weird and hard to find. Now, you wouldn't expect it to be a massive sell because, I mean, come on, it's M&Ms. But, uh, yeah, I was surprised by how little this is mentioned or... Uh, seems to be about so I'm just trying to slide the, the in there back into place again it's the PlayStation 1 had a really bad design for this stuff there we are right it's in uh, it's in great condition now and uh, the manual is in great condition too. yeah manuals in all of these so far it's pretty good so the manuals in great condition too how's the game I haven't really looked at these the game is covered in fingerprints and has a couple of scratches on but that should still play so yeah, you can see all the fingerprints and all the glue. I'll have to give it a wash and see how that goes, but it's in really nice condition. These have been taken care of. Whoever's had them has actually cared for their games to a certain extent. I mean, the fingerprints all over. But yeah, I'm pretty happy to have got all this stuff. Now, the next one's got part of a Prion sticker still on it, and I'll just try and get that off, because not a massive fan of... Uh, I know some people like uh, the immortal John Hancock leave the stickers on because it gives uh, it, it shows that it's more likely to be genuine. But uh, I'm not moving my collection on, let's put it that way. So <laughs> this is all going into a museum eventually. So I'm not really interested in that. But uh, yeah, Disney's action game featuring Hercules. Not bad, eh? Platinum version. So we know there are a fair amount of these out there somewhere. So I'm very happy to have it because I've not played it before, but it looks it looks fairly decent. I mean, the Disney games aren't that bad. Manual is a little bit uh, dog-eared here and there, but it has a manual. So we've done really well with manuals. They've been in all of these ones. A little bit of damage to the inlay just in the corner, but nothing that I need to worry about. Let's have a quick look at the disc. A few fingerprints and uh, maybe the odd scratch, but that's really good condition. So I'm looking forward to giving these a try because... Wow. I was uh, I skipped the PlayStation 1 era, to be honest with you. Back in the day, I was a PC gamer, and uh, I have no qualms about that. I didn't go in for the PlayStation 1 at the time, but there are so many excellent games. that I love Spider-Man 2, Enter Electro, Tekken 3, things like that. I'm hoping that uh, I'll have just found some more classics in that set. And uh, oh, I'm looking forward to giving these a try, but four quid all in. That's, uh, that's what you... For that and that you can't be wrong get to your charity shops guys most of the time like i keep saying to people most of the time they won't have anything but on those days that they do if you're not there someone else is getting them and then when you come back in they don't have anything so do get in there we look almost every day that's how we find stuff for the set that's how we can manage to keep building this collection. I mean, we're at 75.9% of PlayStation 2 now. A lot of it comes from CEX, yes, and contrary to what a lot of people say, yeah, we're not doing vouchers for a huge amount of it. I'm spending my own money to get this stuff because I want it. But it doesn't mean that I'm not uh, trying to find the bargains either. And I think if you uh, get out there and check your charity shops, you can probably get some bargains too. Oh my goodness, guys, I didn't expect to be uh, putting anything else into this. So, I do have a few things, though, and uh, I picked them up from CEX and then uh, went and uh, had a look around charity shops. Always do it the other way around, guys. After I bought these, I found enough Wii games to give me £29 worth of credit 
on a £2 outlay. So I could have got all this for nothing, basically. But I've got them anyway, and uh, let's have a look at what I picked up, because you know me, I am a connoisseur of crap. So, of course, I've just picked up a copy of uh, Aliens Colonial Marines Limited Edition version. Now, great condition case, it's, uh, like it's hardly ever been used. I wonder why, my goodness. So, I had a look at it, and it's in rather nice condition. So, there we go. Stick that back in there. It's got... Uh, Limited edition DLC, I'm assuming the code is on the back. Has that even been used? Well, it's got a redemption code. I'll try it out and see what happens. <laughs> Perfect condition manual. I have a feeling that this hasn't really been used much. So maybe the code will work, maybe it won't. I got it for a pound anyway, so I'm not going to complain too much. I wish I bought it when it was 50p, but I got it for a pound anyway. Uh, but that's not all, because the reason I actually went into the shop was I was browsing the CEX website last night. You know, as you do, just to see if anyone had put anything into the local shop. You know, just in case it's worth going down there. And it was, because I spotted that there. Xbox exclusive of uh, Street Fighter Anniversary Collection. Now, this is an Xbox exclusive in... Uh, Europe and Japan, but not in America, because it came out on PS2 in America. But here, I've got a raggedy copy. Unfortunately, it has got a bit of damage on the case. Nothing too bad, but uh, everything else is here, and it's in pretty good condition. So I'm looking forward to giving this a try. I didn't realise it was an exclusive. It wasn't on my list of exclusives to look out for. It will be in a moment when I uh, update it, but it wasn't. So I'm very happy to have uh, spotted it while I was having a browse, because, yeah, I'm going to go for that. But that's not all, because uh, while I was there, I quickly glanced over at the uh, anime shelves as I was passing and found Disgaea. I didn't even know this was an animated series based on the computer games which are up there and which, by the way, are amazing. Get Disgaea Hour of Darkness on PS2. If you're a fan of any kind of tactical game, get Disgaea Hour of Darkness. Get the sequel if you can, because it's pretty good too. But the first one, oh my goodness, I have spent... Hundreds of hours on that because you can level up your characters and you can level up your weapons and monsters can join your team and you can level up the monsters as well. So I did. <laughs> it's just one of those things. I, I leveled up a sword for my main character. I leveled up some of the uh, characters I created. Uh, I, I made a, a warrior mage called Hermione and uh, she almost became as powerful as the main character because I leveled her up so much. It's well worth playing. It's not one of those games where the main character just is elite just because he's the main character. He should be because he's like the demon prince, but you can get other characters up to his kind of level. So you can have a team of ultimate badasses and just stomp right through the entire game. Well worth it. So I loved that. So I picked this up to see what it's like. I've just been watching the first couple of episodes. Oh my goodness, it's taking the piss something royally. This is the kind of anime that I adore. It knows that it's silly. It knows that the plot of the, the game it's based on is ridiculous. So it's having so much fun just royally taking the piss out of the genre. And it's hilarious. So, well worth six quid. Anyway, that would have been all. But then someone sent me something. And now... I don't normally go in for this. I don't normally accept uh, offers to send things. I know I'm trying to put together exhibits for a museum, but <sighs> gotta remember, guys. I come from a background where I, I wasn't, I wasn't like destitute, but we weren't rich. Let's put it that way. We, we were quite uh, poor, and uh, as a result, I, I could never reciprocate if anyone wanted to give me a gift because I didn't have the money. And even though I'm rather well off now, I mean, <laughs> I can afford to spend a lot of ca cash on uh, computer games. So, I, as you would expect, uh, not uh, in the same position now. I still have that uh, in me of uh, I, I can't possibly reciprocate. So I'm very, very uh, unwilling to accept uh, gifts. And I have, well, occasionally, sometimes I have. But today, someone sent me something and I wasn't expecting it at all. He, He'd offered it last year, and uh, it, it was very kind of him. And then uh, nothing had happened, so I thought, well, maybe he's decided to keep it. Fair enough, it's his stuff, he can do what he wants. Then it arrived. So, let's have a look at what I've been sent. What do you think it is, guys? Nice leather case. How cool does this look? Hey, this is an Amstrad NC200. It is a small 
laptop computer from the early 90s built on uh, CPC technology. So this is an 8-bit with a Z80 processor in it. It's basically a portable Amstrad CPC running its own special operating system and an implementation of BBC Basic. I fitted the batteries, it takes five C-cell batteries, because of course it does, and uh, it has a, uh, a lithium-ion watch battery in it as well. There you are. All there, everything works so well. And it just works, powers up, works. It's got a disk drive in the side. We'll have a proper look on Game Hammer at some point. It's got a disk drive in the side so you can use a single, a double density even, three and, three and a half inch disks. And wonderful. I could use this to write my scripts on for all the, the shows like Game Hammer and uh, all the uh, web TV shows that we're planning. Use it for all sorts, but its main reason it's here is it's going to be an exhibit in the museum when the museum happens. So we've got now the Amstrad CPC, which is behind me, the NC100, and the NC200. We have an Amstrad exhibit. So I am very, very happy to add this to the set. Now, the person who sent me this wants to remain anonymous, which is fair enough, uh, but you know who you are. Thank you so much. I I really can't uh, express how how grateful I am for this. It's it's wonderful. So thank you so much. But guys, uh, that wasn't all because uh, CDX has provided. We had a fair bit of uh, money left from the uh, the exchange uh, when I uh, had a few things. So I've been out and picked up. Uh, was it Rayman Two: The Great Escape? This is. Actually, a pretty good game. I, I like the Rayman games. I, I like the old platformers. This is very 3D, so it's not quite what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be a 2D game. I think the first one's 2D. Uh, that's the kind of platform I always love. But this has actually turned out to be a lot of fun. I pl plugged it in to test it out and uh, played for about half an hour before I thought, actually, I've got to get on with some work. So highly recommend that one. A lot of fun. It's not the only game, because we also managed to find Largo Winch. Now, this is almost in uh, as new condition. It's really good condition, and it's not a brilliant game. It feels like a very uh, slow-paced uh, Grand Theft Auto if you're playing a CEO instead of playing a thug. So, it's odd, but uh, I'm going to give it a try and see how it goes. Uh, it didn't grab me at first, though, I have to admit that. But one that uh, kind of did is Off-Road Extreme which I thought we already had, and I had to double-check on the list, which is why you should have a list of your games if you're going for something like a big set like this. This is uh, in really good condition, hardly hardly ever used, it doesn't open much, and uh, everything's here. It's great condition, and I'm very happy to add it to the set. It's a lot of fun, a little bit uh, not quite as good as uh, some races, but a lot of fun, and pretty good either way. So it's like three and a half out of five, yeah. But the one that really, really made us go out and think, actually, we're going to spend this uh, credit that we've managed to amass on games rather than something like a Master System converter for the Mega Drive, was this. Despicable Me. I had to get this. It's hard to find. I've got it in a plastic bag. Everything's here. It's in like new condition. I had to get it because it's a great, great platform game. And I've really enjoyed playing it. I... There's a one, um, King, Poss King Possible, What's the Switch? Something like that. And that turned out to be a uh, rather surprisingly good uh, 2.5D platformer, which this is pretty much the same thing. And it's the same quality. It's a really good game. It's a surprising hidden gem. A bit like that Kim Possible game. So I'm really happy to have added that to the set. But that's not all. Because uh, while I've been wandering around... I also found this. Now, this might not seem like much to you guys. It's a Logic 3 Game Boy uh, carrying case. Let's open it up. Really nice condition. Enough space for a lot of games and uh, Game Boy and even a, and like a, an adapter, maybe a, a big screen adapter, that kind of thing. 40 pence. I wasn't going to say no because when I go traveling, I do like to take the Game Boy with me in, so I've got a few games. Jen wanted to climb a mountain today. I kind of wanted a day off where we just play some games, so we decided to compromise. We will climb the mountain and I will play some games. And I've basically just been wrapping it in a t shirt and hoping for the best in uh, my suitcase. So that is going to come in very handy. But even that's not the final thing. 
because the final thing is something that a friend of uh, my wife Jen has sent us. A320 Airbus American Edition. And uh, yeah, this is like the sequel to the European one. And it's in amazing condition. This is an Amiga game, which uh, is the first Amiga game that I've got actually. So I'm going to just open it up. So heavy. Here's the uh, disc. And then we have all kinds, like the, the fold-out uh, poster. This is just... Oh, how good is this? The reference manual, which is in amazing condition. It's all the... Uh, yeah, all the little codes and uh, stuff that you need. If you know uh, how to fly, or you've ever flown uh, a flight simulator, you know there's lots of codes. Pilot manual gets you all the information, and then this is the reason why it's heavy ILS approach charts because this goes all in. This is a proper flight simulator, guys. The approach charts for all of the uh, airports and things. Oh, my goodness. Columbus, Ohio, they are how to approach Columbus, Ohio. That's for the uh, northeast coast. More for the west coast. So, uh, Las Vegas, uh, Nevada. They are approach chart for Las Vegas. Just keeps going, guys. High altitude en route charts. <coughs> Look at that, that is amazing. Oh my goodness. So, and that is, uh, I'm not sure which ones the, for that are, but uh, yeah, high altitude on reading charts again, uh, effective 1st of April 1993, so that dates when this is from. This is stuff, it's all the kind of things that you, you've always wanted from a flight simulator, the full package, and even the registration card. This, I couldn't believe this when uh, this turned up in the post because uh, I hadn't been told it was coming. But my goodness, it's so good. But it's in such great condition as well. I love flight simulators. I, I'm a big fan of flight simulators. So when this arrives, it's like, oh, my goodness. I love this stuff. But I've got to pack it all back away very, very carefully. I'm going to try and play it on an emulator because uh, I think that's the best way to go. But with all the charts and stuff, it should be quite, quite in, uh, what, what would the word? Immersive experience? I think that's the best word. So yeah, Alex Crompton, thank you so much for sending this. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. But yeah, that is all for this. Oh my goodness, guys, I didn't expect to be adding anything else to this video, but here we are. So, <laughs> it's terrible weather outside, but thankfully I'm in here, got my games, I'll be happy. But I'm going to add to that set of games because I found a copy of Wet Tricks down in uh, CEX in town, and I had to have this because I love Tetris and all of its spin-offs. Wet Tricks, I have Aqua Aqua Wet Tricks 2 on PlayStation 2, and now I've got the original, and you know what? This is a great game. I love puzzle games of all kinds. They're just great fun. It's my kind of game. You can come back to it time and time again. It's always different, which is why I love them. So I'm very happy to add that to the set. But it's not the only thing I've found down in town because also Pac-Man Adventures in Time. Now, I have no idea what this is, but it was there for a pound and it's a Pac-Man game and it's a, a bit of a weird 3D one, which I've never heard of before. So I had to pick it up because what is it? It's a DOS game. I think it's a DOS game. No, 2000. So it's a Windows game. I don't know whether I can run it. I might be able to get it running in Wine on my Mac. So I'll give it a try. And uh, I'm looking forward to giving it a try because, another, again, it's a kind of game that you can come back to time and time again because it's a Pac-Man game. So I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Don't know if I can get any footage. If I do, you'll be seeing it as I talk to you now. But 
it's one of those things. If I can get things running, that's great. If I can't, then I have to wait until I find a, a cheap, decent PC that I can add to the set, and then we can get other things going in here as well. But it's still not the only thing, because Jen found a novelization of Robocop 2. Now, I didn't even know this existed. I didn't know there was a novelization that could put... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of make uh, Frank Miller's insanity coherent. That film was not brilliant. It wasn't uh, as bad as Robocop 3, but it wasn't as good as Robocop 1. And uh, this is in great condition. It has been read. I've got, I can see the marks down the uh, the spine of it. But it's in great condition other than that. So, yeah, very nice to add that one to my collection. I do love novelizations. It's always nice to be able to look at the book and look at the film and see uh, what the differences are. So I'm looking forward to giving that a try later on. But even that's not the final thing, because I found this in my local charity shop, The Longest Journey. Now, this is an old uh, point-and-click adventure game from where I can tell. It might not be point-and-click. It might be a, a kind of 3D graphic uh, adventure. I can't remember exactly. I haven't tried it out yet. It is uh, a PC game, so again, I'll have issues uh, getting it running on multiple discs. It's massive. And the discs aren't really all that happy to stay in, in the, the case, but there's four of them. It's a four-disc game, and it's got all the documentation to go with it. But here's the weird thing. I found it in a charity shop in uh, my hometown, my hometown, the town I'm in at the moment. But it's the French version. So I'm in England, and this is French. Now, I can speak French, so it's, it'll be all right. But... It is a bit weird to find a French game in a, an English charity shop. So I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Again, I'll see if I can get it running. I may end up getting the version on GOG if they've got a Mac version and seeing if I can run it that way. But I'm very happy to add it to the set because it's such good condition. There's no way I was leaving a game in this good state on a shelf in a charity shop to get knocked around and poked and prodded. But that is all for the moment. Um, I was hoping that we would have another announcement for... Uh, a nice big ticket item, but it's going to have to wait now because uh, that really is all I've got. It hasn't arrived yet. I was expecting it, but it hasn't arrived. So got to get these uh, things out. It'll have to go into the next one. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this. And if you did, remember to click that like button. Even if you didn't, uh, leave a comment and uh, let me know. <laughs> it's always nice to hear from people and what they'd like to see. But you have to wait till next time to see the the big uh, thing that I've got uh, coming in. I can't wait, really can't wait. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have liked this, and I'll see you tomorrow.